Don't expect to get the answer to life's meaning nor life's problems. Don't expect no solution except God is in you. However you are listening to us, we invite you to lift up the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He alone is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. We will now have our uh, responsive reading, which comes from Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, claim a company to eat of my flesh, they stumble and fell. Though an host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war shall rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing. Yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry unto, unto you with my voice. Have mercy upon me also, and answer me. When thou sayest, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, O Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my fa father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord shall teach me, O Lord, thy way, and lead me into a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over to the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I have fainted unless I have believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Together, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Brother Ishmael Lightborn comes to lead our congregational song. We sing together our opening hymn, Sometimes the Light Surprises. A Christian, while he sings, it is the Lord who rises with healing in his wings. When comforts are declining, he grants the soul again a season of clear shining to cheer it after the rain.
No vine nor fig tree neither their wonted fruit should bear. Though all the fields should wither, nor flock, nor herd be there, yet God the same abiding, his praise shall tune my voice. For while in him confiding, I cannot but rejoice. This is a very old hymn, written in the 18th century by William Cowper, an English poet laureate. But you know the amazing thing about that man? He spent his adult life in an insane asylum. And yet, he was able to pen these words they are words seemingly sometimes of desperation. Have you ever been in a desperate situation? When you feel that everything, the walls are closing in, there is no hope, whether it is a medical situation, you're sitting outside the ICU ward and hoping for the best. You're standing outside the bank and hoping that they approve the loan. You are in desperate situations and it is in these circumstances that he wrote. In fact, he, the last verse of this borrows very strongly from Habakkuk 3 and 17, which says that though the fig tree does not blossom, and though the olive crop will fail, and though there will be no sheep in the pen and no cows in the store, yet Will I rejoice in God? Are you able to do that in your desperation? Are you able to rejoice in God in spite of life's circumstances? Because sometimes they drag you through the mud. But can you rejoice in God? And yet, will I rejoice in God? Can I encourage you, whatever your circumstances are today, to rejoice in God? Because rejoicing... The, the, Nehemiah says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So rejoice today in the Lord. Though vine nor fig tree neither, their wonted fruit would bear. And though all the fields should wither, these are desperate times. Let's sing and rejoice together and praise our God. And if you are ready to rejoice, let me hear you shout, praise the Lord. Praise. Let us bow our heads in reverence humbly and graciously
approach the throne of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And so here we are, Heavenly Father, in your presence, with grateful and thankful hearts. Thankful, O oh God, that you have spared our lives to assemble one more time. Grateful and thankful, Father God, for having brought us through the past week Filled with its challenges, God, we're here today. Acknowledging your grace and your mercies. Acknowledging that you are a God who is omnipotent. A God who is faithful. A God who is merciful. A God who is gracious. A God who is kind. God who is forgiving, a God who is loving, a God who is holy, a God who is righteous. And so even now, Heavenly Father, as we have assembled those of us gathered in these hollowed walls, those of us, oh God, tuning in by way of live stream, We've come with one mind and one heart to worship you. We ask you even now, O oh God, to clothe us in your righteousness. Fill us, O oh God, with your love. Help us, O oh God, that as we worship today, that our worship will be in spirit and in truth. Because it is the only worship that you will receive. Search our hearts, O oh God. Know our thoughts. And as you do so, Heavenly Father, if there be anything within us that would serve as a hindrance, that would block our worship from being received as a sweet spelling savor, we ask even now, in the name of Jesus, God, that you would purge us, that you would cleanse us, O oh God, that you would wash us. We want to be pleasing in your sight. And so, Heavenly Father, as we come, we lift up now the one who will break the bread of life with your people today, Pastor Timothy Stewart. God, we thank you for the anointing upon his life. We thank you also, Heavenly Father, for him having embraced the spirit of humility, having a desire to walk in obedience to your will and to your way. And so we thank you, Heavenly Father, that as he stands before your people today, and as he opens his mouth to declare your word, your word shall indeed go forth. Your word shall accomplish all that you have purposed it to do and shall not return void. Help us to have hearts today that will be receptive to what it is that you will say to us. Help us to have ears that will listen to your instructions, Heavenly Father, and make the right application to our lives. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For all that you have done, thank you, O oh God, for all that you are doing even now. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for all that will yet be manifested in our midst even this day. We give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. It is in the name of your Son, Jesus, who is the Christ. We humbly pray that all of God's people say, Amen. Various Lord Jesus, ruler of all, nature is our invocational chant. Let's sing it lustily and joyfully. 
We're celebrating Jesus today. He is the great I am. Let's sing it. Fairest Lord Jesus, Better is the shimmering starry sky. Jesus shines brighter. Jesus shines clearer than all the angels in heaven can boast.
If you love that name of Jesus today, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We borrowed the words from the writer who says, Oh, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. We thank Almighty God for all of us in the sanctuary today. Bethel Baptist Church has been established in 1790. You're also worshiping in the oldest Baptist church in the country. And so be thank Almighty God that you didn't think it robbery to be with us today. Our pastor is Reverend Timothy Stewart, who has been pastoring this church for over 38 years, into his 39th year now. And so you have bragging rights that you have worshiped in Bethel Baptist Church. And we pray that God will bless you. And as the song was sung earlier, you will not leave here as you came in Jesus' name. My brothers and sisters, we now go into offertory period, uh, that time where everybody can participate. And so we will give unto the Lord. This is one time when the Lord challenges us. God says to us, prove me now and see if I would not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room to receive it. And so be thankful, Almighty God, for those who come in obedience to his word to give of our tithes and offering into the storehouse. As Deaconess Daphne Lockhart prepares to come with our offertory prayer, we want to say particularly for the purpose of our visitors that we would be guided by uh, the protocols that are in place we will be led by our pastor and the pulpit area, and the congregation will be led from the rear of the church forward. God bless you as Deaconess Daphne comes with the prayer. Good morning. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day. Thank you, Father God, that we can come together one more time to give back to you a portion of that which you have blessed us with, our tithes and our offering. Father God, we thank you for your word declares to bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And it says to prove you and see if you will not open unto us the windows of heaven and pour us our blessings wherein we will not have room enough to receive. Father, we receive your word. We thank you for your word. Father God, we ask now that you bless the givers. Bless those, their God, that would raise the offering. Father God, we ask your blessings now that it would be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. And all people say. If you'd like to give to this ministry, there are four opportunities for you to give. One, you can give to us through our Royal Bank of Canada account, our main branch account, the account number 2895688, or through our Bank of the Bahamas account. The main branch again, branch code 157, account number 135-000-1435. Otherwise, you can give through an internal transfer if you have a Royal Bank account or a Bank of the Bahamas account. A bank-to-bank -bank transfer if you have online banking from another institution or over the counter if you happen to be in one of those institutions and would like to make a deposit over the counter. Or if you'd like, you can simply go to our website, Historic Bethel Baptist, and click on our Give button. That will give you an opportunity to give via credit or debit card. And you can specify exactly which ministry you would like to give funds to so that we can direct those funds accordingly. God bless you.
If that is your claim, say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you have that blessed hope, say glory to God. Glory. Say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to Almighty God. What a wonderful thing to be able to say on this blessed Sunday morning that when he calls me, I will answer. These days when we see names being called every day, names upon names upon names, my brothers and sisters, it is time for the word of God. And we thank Almighty God that we have our pastor in the house, Reverend Timothy Stewart, a man who knows God and is able to rightly divide the word of truth. He comes before us with the word of God today, but just before he comes, Bethel's Chorale, this Bethel's Chorale, blessed Chorale, will come with a selection. After that, the next voice will be God's messenger for today, the pastor of this church and the president of the Na Progressive National Baptist Convention in the United States, Reverend Timothy Stewart. Give him a hand ahead of time. Amen.
Thank you, Corral. This morning, I had the tremendous opportunity to give my 60th anniversary president's message of the Progressive National Baptist Convention. And that will be aired from the 1st through the 4th of August when we celebrate our actual 60th anniversary. But I just want to refer to certain essential features of that message this morning and then we will be on our way. We went back to the 41st chapter of the book of Genesis where it begins verse 1. Two full years later, Pharaoh dreamed that he was standing on the bank of the Nile River. Our theme today, as usual, is in pursuit of wholeness, maximizing our potential. We began the message this morning that by acknowledging that God has Joseph as it were, in a waiting room. Soon he will call him in order to carry out the assignment that God has for him. But not before Joseph abused by his brothers, not, not before his being taken advantage of by Potiphar's wife, and not before he has to suffer an injustice by spending time in prison for something he did not and I said this morning as we built on that statement that we must be careful when we are called to suffer we must be careful We must be careful because I'm told that Jesus was a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and so by his stripes we are healed. And so we better be careful how we interpret our time of suffering because 
you don't know how God intends to use that suffering in order to bring to pass his glory, his honor, and an assignment, a special assignment he may have for you. Be careful how we interpret times of suffering as bad luck. When uh, the truth of the matter is God is working his purpose out in our lives for his honor and for his glory. And so we are told and that while standing on the bank, of the river Nile, Pharaoh receives a dream. Now, the point I want us to get at this juncture in the story as Pharaoh unveils this and reveals this dream is that there is no point from verse 1 through verse 8 where we are told God said anything where we are told that God's spokesman, Joseph, says anything. Matter of fact, Joseph is still in jail. And so, Pharaoh did not have the tremendous advantage during his time of frustration and confusion and disturbance, he did not have the awareness of the presence and the word of God. So from verse 2 to verse 8, he is recalling this dream. And as we read the dream, in his dream he saw seven fat healthy cows come up out of the river and begin grazing in the marsh grass. Then he saw seven more cows come up behind them from the Nile, but these were scrawny and thin. These cows stood beside the fat cows on the river bank. Then the scrawny, thin cows ate the seven healthy fat cows. At this point in the dream, Pharaoh woke up. And then as we go to verse 5, he, he, he goes to sleep again, and he gets another dream. This time, seven heads of grain, plump and beautiful, growing in a single stalk. Then seven more heads of grain appeared, but these were shriveled and withered by the east wind. And these thin heads swallow up the seven plump, well-formed heads. Then Pharaoh woke up and again realized it was a dream. The next morning, 
Pharaoh was very disturbed. That's where we want to take you. He was disturbed by the dream. And so he does what most people would do. He resort to the resource that he has. And since Pharaoh and his court, inclusive of the magicians and soothsayers, made up his government, he, he had access to government, government advice. But it says, not one of them, I said he had access to government advice. Not one of them can tell him what the dreams meant. My God, what a place to be. You have the entire resource of government at your disposal and you are disturbed and confused because no one can help you. No one can help you. And I put it to you that because at this point he is relying on his own resource. No God, no God representative like Joseph, none. So, when he realized that he was in a quandary and the court realized they were in a quandary because Pharaoh was disturbed, The butler spoke up and he said, oh, king, oh, pharaoh, I forgot. It slipped me. It slipped me. He said, when you were angry with me and the baker and you had both of us remanded, to the jail in the palace of the captain of the guard. While we were there, the captain of the guard had a Hebrew slave. And if you can just find that slave, I believe like he interpreted our dreams, he will interpret your dreams. So, they called for, for Joseph. Just before I go there, I, I do want to say don't expect to get the answer to life's meaning nor life's problems. Don't expect no solution except God is in it. At this point, Pharaoh has no relationship with God. None. He is winging it based on what he believes he has at his disposal. And so I'm sure he thought he was flattering Joseph, giving him an encouraging word, seeing that Joseph just only had time to shave and changed his clothes before they brought him before Pharaoh. 
And so he said to Joseph, I'm told that you are able to interpret, give the meaning of the dreams once they are told to you. And Joseph stops the by God. The, the smell of the jail ain't off him yet. Just reach in front of, of Pharaoh. And he says, Joseph, the prisoner, the inmate, says to Pharaoh, what you are dealing with is beyond me. He says, but I know somebody. I serve a God who is able to reveal to Pharaoh. And that changes the entire complexion because now they have somebody before Pharaoh who has a relationship to the God of Abraham, to the God of Isaac, and to the God of Jacob. And so we read again, verse 17. So Pharaoh told Joseph his dream. In my dream, he said, and he was going over basically what Pharaoh said earlier. I was standing on the bank of the Nile River, and I saw seven fat, healthy cows come up out of the river and began, or begin grazing in the marsh grass. But then I saw seven sick, sick-looking cows, scrawny and then come up after them. I've never seen such sorry looking animals in all the land of Egypt. These thin, scrawny cows ate the seven fat cows. But afterward, you wouldn't have known it for they were still as thin and scrawny as before. Then I woke up. Then I fell asleep again and I had another dream. This time I saw seven heads of grain, full and beautiful, growing on a single star. Then seven more heads of grain appeared, but these were blighted and shriveled and withered by the east wind. And the shriveled heads swallowed the seven healthy heads. I told these dreams to the magicians, but no one could tell me what they mean. I used everything available to me. And now I'm hoping, Joseph, that you can assist me. Verse 25. Joseph responded. Both of Pharaoh's dreams mean the same thing. God is telling Pharaoh in advance what he is about to do. The seven healthy cows and the seven healthy heads of green both represent seven years of prosperity. The seven thin, scrawny cows that came up late, later and the seven thin heads of grain withered by the east wind, represent seven years of famine. Um, 
And I said this morning in the earlier service that the seven years of plenty was symptomatic and symbolic of everything that we experience in life that worked in our favor, that assisted us in our growth and in our development. And we said that The seven years of famine represent everything that came up against us in life to prohibit growth, to prohibit knowledge of God and a relationship with God. We liken that to the United States of America with all of their racial situations and how from the time black people got to America, there's always been a tremendous force working against their destiny and their future. Those seven mean, those seven years of farmer. But every now and then, some brave soul, whether it's a president or some brave soul in the Supreme Court, some brave soul on the police force will put their own life and put their own sacrifice, their own rank and status in order to work for the development and the advancement of black folk. And so my point to us today is, is you could think of anything that sought to prohibit your growth and your development with God and family and church. That's your seven years of famine. You can think of those times when, in spite of the headwinds of difficulty, despite the showers, and the tumultuous waves and inclement weather in life that came up against you. God kept you. God preserved you. Verse 29, the next seven years will be a period of great prosperity. Now, we're not talking about the seven, generally the seven years of plenty and the seven years of famine now. He is saying there's going to be another seven years ahead of you. will be a period of great prosperity throughout the land of Egypt. Isn't God merciful? Isn't God gracious? God is saying, it doesn't matter what you faced in the past. It didn't matter what you had to overcome. I'm providing another seven prosperous years for you. I know it was, it's been hard. I know it's been difficult. I know you thought you were all alone, but I'm providing another opportunity. But afterward, I want you to hear me today. 
there will be seven years of famine so great that all the prosperity will be forgotten in Egypt. Famine will destroy the land, verse 31. The, this famine, this famine, this, this, this ain't like no other famine. The one to come. Will be so severe that even the memory of the good years will be erased. Good God from Zion. And one more, verse 32. As for having two similar dreams, it means that these events have been decreed by God. And he will soon make them happen. You're going to get seven good years ahead of you. But God says, just around the corner, after those seven years, be seven years, you wouldn't even be able to remember what the seven prosperous years look like. The memory of it will be erased. And the mere fact, hold on to this, that it was two of each the cow and the grain meant that God he has decreed these events the voice of God has stated it and secondly he will soon make them happen So now, what has God decreed and what is he going to make happen? Verse 33. Therefore, Pharaoh should find an intelligent and wise man and put him in charge, the entire land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh should appoint supervisors over the land and let them collect one-fifth of all the crops during the seven good years. Verse 35. Have them gather all the food. Is that produced? In the good years that are just ahead, bring it to Pharaoh's storehouses. Store it away and guard it so there will be food in the city. Joseph's suggestions were well received by Pharaoh and his officials. So, right now you have government, Pharaoh and his officials. You have Joseph. And you have the people all submitting now to the plan of God and to the word of God because now they have heard that God has decreed it. So they are all now on one accord holding on to the word of God. So Pharaoh wanted to know if they could find anyone else like this man so obviously filled with the Spirit of God. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has revealed this, the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one is as intelligent and wise as you are. You will be in charge of my court and all my people will take orders from you. Only I sitting on the throne will have a rank higher 
than yours. But I just want to finish. I want to finish beginning from, again, from have them gather all the food produced in the good years that just ahead bring it to Pharaoh's storehouses. That's the one-fifth that all must contribute to. Store it away and guard it so there will be food in the city. That way there will be enough to eat when the seven years of famine come to the land of Egypt. Otherwise, this famine will destroy the land. He said, if you could just during that, those prosperous and those years of plenty, if you can just hold on to one-fifth and see to it that it's transported to Pharaoh's storehouses and do that for the entire period, those seven good years. See, the problem with too much of us is that we want to carry some of what goes on in the seven years of famine too. And, and we are told that, no, there's nothing during the seven years of famine that need to go into the storehouse. Only what God has produced during the seven years of plenty. And Joseph said, if you can just carry out God's command, take it to his storehouse. Whatever God has required of us and asked us to do during those good years. He said, if, if you just do that, that will be enough to keep you through the seven years of famine. Don't mind that those years are going to be so severe that you're not even going to remember the seven prosperous years. But if you can just, just hold on to the word of God during those years of plenty, if you can just trust God, if, if you can just hold on to God and, 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 and give God what belongs to him, during the good years, if you can just trust in God, that will be enough. <laughs> that will be enough. I don't care who you know. I don't care what they have. No. By the time that seven years of famine pulled through here, they ain't got nothing. Because God ain't with them. But if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, you build your hopes on things eternal. Whatever you are able to do, trusting God, God will bring you through. Ask the Savior to help you. Yes, sir. Comfort. Strengthen and keep you. Yes, sir. He is willing yes, sir. to aid you. He will carry you through. Yes, sir. During times of difficulty and distress, the wise person listens to 
the Spirit of God and prepares. The story of Joseph is unique in that it tells us from the pages of 4,000 years removed how a simple, ordinary life can not only be transformative to so many others, but can resonate down for millennia. Is there somebody here in, in Bethel Baptist Church today who, who are now experiencing the lean years? And do you appreciate what the true cost of discipleship is all about? Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the German theologian who lost his life in World War II, in his book, The Cost of Discipleship, says, when God calls a man, he bids him come and die. The Christian life is not a donation. It, it is a total sacrifice, total surrender. And so today with your eyes closed and your heads bowed, if there is one who is ready for total surrender, who is ready to allow God to take their lives and to use it and to shape it, even the times of great distress and suffering and pain, I'm going to ask you with your heads bowed and with no one unnecessarily moving around, to just quickly slip your hand up and put it back down. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Continue to, to close your eyes and to bow your heads as I go before God on our behalf. Our Father, we thank you for those hands that just went up. We thank you because those hands are attached to bodies that, that long for you and that are publicly requesting your intervention in their lives. God, we ask you to move in their lives in the areas that you know they need you as they surrender to you. God, we thank you for getting our attention. Thank you for times of difficulties that keep us on our knees praying. Because if times were always good be, we wouldn't pray. Thank you for reminding us of how frail life is, how fragile our very existence is. And thank you that you are able to do what your word declares you will do. So we accept your presence as we submit our person to your holy will. Break us and melt us, mold us and fill us. We thank you for patience, humility, forgiveness, submission, faith, and restoration. In the name of he who is called Christ, even Jesus. Amen. Let us now stand together and sing our closing hymn. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let's sing together as we go out into the world and celebrate God's grace and mercy. <clears throat> Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, I
the Lord. Now the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his radiant, blessed, majestic countenance. Grant you his peace. In Jesus name we pray. Church Auxiliary Zoom meetings are held as follows. Help us, Sister Out, please, every first and third Thursday at 6 p.m. Reach One Youth Ministry every Friday at 6 p.m., ages 12 to 18. Teen Talk Bahamas every Friday at 6 p.m. Facebook at Global 99.5 and Radio. Global 99.5 FM Prayer Meeting every Saturday at 7 a.m. Men's Fellowship every second and fourth Saturday at 6.30 p.m. The church has been called to special prayer and fasting for Pastor Timothy Stewart and his family 
every Wednesday, 12 noon to 1 p.m. as they go through this time of testing. Join the church via Zoom every Wednesday as we petition God for guidance, healing, and His perfect will to be done in the life of Pastor Stewart and his family. The link, as well as directives on what we should be in prayer for, will be sent out on Tuesdays. We have received special prayer requests for the following persons. Deacon Sidney Stirrup, at home. Sister Mary Butler, at home. Sister Siobhan Butler, in Florida. Sister Sally Hutchison. Brother Edward Lang, at home. And Brother Howard Thompson, at home. My brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus is your refuge and strength, a very present help in your time of need. Trust God for your healing and be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. We offer fervent prayer for the sick and shut-in of our nation and members of Bethel, including Reverend Charles Moxie, Brother Edward Fitzgerald, and Deacon Sidney Sturrock. May Almighty God heal, deliver, and bless you as you hold to God's unchanging hand. James 5.16 records, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. We very prayerfully intercede on behalf of the sick and shut-in of our nation and members of Bethel, including Lydia Adderley, Mary Butler, Dorothy Carey, Cynthia Devalier, Doris Fitzgerald, Edward Fitzgerald, Dorothy Hanna, Sheila Hepburn, Jenny Hinsey, Barbara Jones, Constance Mackey, Sylvia Munnings, Marjorie Murphy, Charlene Neely, Antoinette Pinder, Shambula Pinder, Cometa Ramming, Sarah Rowe, Sydney Starrup, Mutilin Simmons, Isabel Strawn, Murchis Sweeting, Jennifer Util Rowe, Coralie Wilson, Lillian Wilson, and Antoinette Wiley. Celebrating wedding anniversary this week are Ori and Hope Johnson, 24 years, Wendell and Vanria Malcolm, 48 years, Kenneth and Kayla Ingram, 23 years. We extend best wishes for many happy and blessed years to come. Happy birthday blessings go out to Howard Miller, Christine Moultrie, Tayshawn Newbold, Ishmael Lightborn III, Kevin Malcolm, Amari Bethel, DeMurco Smith, Terrell Dauphin Jr., Lynette Nesbitt, Kimiata Turnquest, and Sister Maxine Thompson. The Progressive National Baptist Convention will celebrate 60 years virtually under the theme In Pursuit of Wholeness, Maximizing Our Potential, August 1st to 5th, 2021. President Stewart encourages each member to register for $75 and to purchase a banquet ticket in honor of the 60th anniversary year. Persons wanting to register for the Congress educational classes have that option for an additional $30. Please go to pnbc.org to register. Let us all get involved to make this 60th year a success. For further information, please contact the church's office at 323-5000. Friends, our pastor, Rev. Dr. Timothy Stewart, invites you to visit with us this Sunday at our 8 a.m. or 11 a.m. worship service as God reveals himself to us through the teaching and preaching of his holy word. For those of you who are unable to attend these services, you may join us live stream at www.historicbethelbaptist.org. View us on YouTube at Historic Bethel Baptist Church or on Facebook at Bethel Baptist Church. For more information, please call the church at 323-5000 or by email to BethelBaptist1790 at gmail.com. And now, my beloved brethren, as you have been blessed by the Word of God, go in the name of Jesus the Christ and be a blessing to someone today. Jesus loves you.
and so do we.